Welcome back, everyone. It's another wonderful day on this flat as a pancake world. And today we are taking another adventure into the flatness of the Southern Hemisphere. If you had not watched my previous videos about the Southern Hemisphere, I highly suggest it, especially the very first video from two weeks ago. In this video, I describe how the Southern Hemisphere on the AE map has distances that are astronomically different than what we observe on the ground. And then after that, I took on Jaren and his silly little belief that planes can go really, really fast. But today, we're going to have a little bit of a flashback with boats on the ocean. You may remember from several months ago when I observed boats at the harbor of Busan. The intent of that video was to observe boats as they went over the horizon in the harbor. And while I was doing those observations, I found a boat that I had interest in, and I wanted to know more about it. And with that, I found the website marinetraffic.com. Marinetraffic.com is an amazing website similar to the air traffic websites. It shows you virtually every boat that is on the ocean. And just like a lot of those other websites, it is a pay website with specific free features. By paying for the service, you're allowed to look at virtually any boat and their current and exact location on the ocean. Well, I'm a poor soldier, so I'm not going to subscribe to a website just so I can track boats. But as part of their free service, you are allowed to select boats that you would like to follow. And with that, they will send you an email once a day with the location of that boat, up to 30 updates per month. Now, those updates also include entries into harbor, exits of harbor, docking, mooring. So you may get 5 to 10 notifications in one day as your boat enters a harbor. So as part of this project, several months ago, I wanted to find a boat that was traversing across the Southern Hemisphere. And I found this boat, the Olivia Maersk. It was in New Zealand, and it was getting ready to sail across the Pacific to the northwestern coast of South America. I subscribed to the website, I signed up for this boat as a tracking, and then I just kind of forgot about it. And I got emails every day. I just brushed it off, not really thinking about it. But afterwards, I realized that by doing this, I did have legitimate data of exactly where a boat was crossing the Southern Hemisphere. And that maybe with that data, I'd be able to do some virtual observations of how fast it was going and where it was traveling. So I was able to plot out these specific pings on Google Earth. Now, you'll notice there's a gap in a couple of spots in the beginning. I honestly don't know if those emails didn't come through or if I accidentally deleted them because I did not have the forethought to retain them. But since then, trust me, I have retained every email I've gotten from this website. And on Google Earth, you can see that the general line from these two harbors is straight. It is a straight trek across the globe, the Great Circle Route. And on that Great Circle Route, According to every measurement ever made by any sailor, ever, and by Google Earth, and by every map utilized by governments and private citizens who sail boats across the ocean, the distance between these two harbors is just over 10,000 kilometers. And this trek was made over about 12 days. And utilizing the simple Jaren math, distance divided by time, the Olivia Marisk was traveling at approximately 35 kilometers per hour, or 18.8 .8 knots. But that's not why we're here today. We want to see what the Olivia Marisk did on the flat Earth map. Now, I could do the math like I did last week, airport to airport, or harbor to harbor. But in this case, I don't need to do the port to port, because I actually know the exact locations during the trek. Last week, I didn't know the exact locations of the airplanes because they drop off of tracking after they get over the open ocean. But this week, I have the exact locations as the Olivia Marisk traveled across the Southern Hemisphere. And you can clearly see that it is not a straight line according to the AE map. Now, all we need to do is some basic math. First thing we need to know is the distance between the North Pole and each of these ping locations. Now, 
Now utilizing the longitude locations for each of these points, we're able to identify what the inner angle is between these locations. So now we have the lengths of two sides of our triangle, we have the inner angle of our triangle, and with that and basic geometry, we can identify the distance between these ping marks. Now remember, on the globe, the distance port to port was 10,000 kilometers at 18.8 .8 knots of speed. But on the AE map, we don't double our distance. We more than double it to just under 25,000 kilometers traveled by the Olivia Marisk in 12 days. And with that distance divided by time, we're not doing 18 knots. We're doing 43 knots, more than double the speed of the boat. Again, like last week, maybe Jaren believes that these boats can go faster than they claim. So how fast can these boats actually go? Well, I'll tell you. The fastest known cargo ship on the planet, or the plane, is the Algol-class cargo vessel. And how fast do these ships go? At max speed, they can travel 33 knots. Not 43 knots, Jaren. 33 knots. So as I always request in all of my other videos, unless you can provide me a ship faster than the Algol class, which can actually do 43 knots, or you can provide to me some anecdotal evidence, any anecdotal evidence I'll accept of a crew on a boat claiming they're going wickedly faster than anyone has ever traveled across the ocean, then you need to accept that your model is wrong and it just doesn't work because by your current model, the Southern Hemisphere is enormous compared to reality. So find a model that works, find a ship in a plane that can go faster than reality predicts it can, or shut up. Thank you everyone for joining me again this week. If you like my content, please subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, or leave me a comment down below where you think I got something wrong. If you're new to my channel, I highly encourage you to go back to look at the older videos. They're all short and concise and little nuggets of information of the proofs, the everyday proofs that we live on a globe. This week, I'd like to extend a special thank you to Where's Wally? Many of you know that I've been running a Cavendish experiment and I'm trying to get it set up with a lot of community support. Well, where's Wally not just stepped up for some help on how to set it up? He's actually creating me some hardware so I can monitor the environmentals of the room where the experiment's going to be conducted. If you've not subscribed to Where's Wally, here's a link. I highly encourage it. He's got a lot of really good content over there. Thank you, Wally, for all the support you've given. I'll see you all next week for my next video. And until then, don't forget, stay flat.